Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay ko po ang bawat isa sa akin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw ng ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. Good morning, learners! Welcome back to our Valenzuela live streaming. Again, I am your nurse, Marie Antoinette Ganalon Soriano from the Filipino Village Big Nine National High School. Are you ready to be healthy? Then let's get it on. But before anything else, let me give you some important reminders to observe during our online class. I'm sure you are ready for today's discussion. For today's lesson, here are the most essential learning competencies. First, explain the proper health appraisal procedures. Second, demonstrate proper health appraisal procedures during adolescence in order to achieve holistic health. Third, avail of the health services in the school and community in order to appraise one's health. And last but not the least, apply coping skills in dealing concerns during adolescence. Before we go on to our discussion, may we have a short review on our previous lessons. I hope everyone will actively participate in our activity. Just comment your answers in our comment box. Number one, which dimension of health is involved when you express your emotions in their positive way? Letter A, emotional. B, mental. C, physical. D, moral, spiritual. And the answer is A, emotional. Number two. At what stage of development children explore and develop a sense of self? Letter A, infancy. B, adolescence. C, old age. D, preschool age. And the answer is letter B, adult. Number three, having an adult apple, growth of hair in different areas in the body and increase in height are under what stages? A, mental. B, social. C, emotional. D, physical. And the answer is D, physical. Nice work, learners. 
may I remind you learners that this lesson needs strong parental guidance. It contains words or phrases that may not be suitable for young audiences. Parents or guardians, please guide our learners. Okay then, so for today's lesson, we will be discussing health appraisal and screening procedures. Let me identify health appraisal first. Health appraisal refers to the series of procedures to assess or determine the health status of students. One way to do health appraisal is to know your health status so that you can take the necessary actions to improve your health habits and practices. In case there is a sign of medical problem, early detection can help prevent this from becoming serious that would need appropriate treatment. Here are some screening procedures you need to undergo during your adolescence in order to achieve holistic health. We have physical growth and development screening, vision screening, hearing screening, screening for scoliosis, and breast self-examination. First is the physical growth and development screening. In this screening, your height and weight are being measured using a tape measure and a weighing scale. These measurements are helpful in determining whether the normal physiological growth patterns are occurring on you or not. Second test is vision screening. This is effective in divorce because deviations from normal Identified and refractive errors can be corrected. We commonly use a Snell and chart for this screening. To do this, you need to stand at the distance of 6 meters of the chart. You will try to read what's on the chart with one eye covered. The third one is the hearing screening. We check on the ability to hear sound and determine how well one can communicate with the environment. This screening is performed with pure audiometer, which is a reliable procedure to detect hearing loss. The fourth one is the scoliosis screening. This is to detect problems during the rapid growth in late childhood to early teenage years. This screening will identify any spinal irregularities that would worsen the body's movement and stamina, most likely to lead back pains and other body parts. Here are the steps for scoliosis screening. Number one, stand facing away from the screener. Second, bend forward at the waist 90 degrees, feet 10 cm apart, knees straight, and feet parallel to each other. Third, palms of the hands are facing each other, and arms hang down and relax. The head is turned down. The fifth one is the breast self-examination for both male and female. Self-examination can be performed every month to become more familiar of how your breasts usually look like and feel. You may notice any change from what is normal for you. Begin by looking at your breast in the mirror with your shoulders straight and your arms on your hips. These are the warning signs. Breasts are unusual in size, shape, and color. Breasts are unevenly shaped without visible distortion or swelling. Dimpling, crumpling, or bulging of the skin. A nipple is in an inverted appearance. Changes in appearance of nipple may be visible with redness, soreness, rashes, or swelling. Fluids can be milky, yellow fluid, or blood are coming out from one or both nipples. As an adolescent, you should always remember that you are responsible in your own health. Monitor your body for changes that might need medical checkup and is often referred to our health care providers. 
Let's now move on to our next topic, which is the health services. Health services provides medical treatment and care to the public or group. Our government believes that the strong nation needs healthy citizens. In order to achieve that, the Department of Health promoted community health with a partnership of the Department of Education, Community, Barangay Government, and Non-Government Organizations through the program called Primary Health Care. Here are the services offered in school and community. We have dental health program, dental related examinations, and procedures like extraction of milk teeth, giving prescription by assigned dental practitioner in a community or school. We also have medical clinic. This provides simple intervention or free medicines for simple health problems prescribed by medical practitioners assigned in community or school. Examples include stomach ache, fever, cough, cold, and headache. We also have immunization or child health care. This includes vaccine shots for measles, mumps, polio, rubella, and influenza. Since the children's immunity system is relatively weak, it also aims to control diarrheal diseases caused by microorganisms found in water. Educating the children about water safety and sanitation can help them prevent this disease. We also have this in school. Do you remember your measles, rubella, diphtheria, and tetanus toxoid shot during your elementary days? And be informed also that you will be given another booster shot of these vaccines for this year. Nutritional program. This is when the children's mass is checked and identified whether it is appropriate for their age the BMI or the body mass index. In the community, it is called the Peration Timbang. In response to those children who were classified under category of underweight, the community and school provide food supplements through giving vitamins or free health snacks during recess. This also helps in the increase of good attendance of the students as well. We also have the deworming. This service aims to eliminate intestinal parasites in children through mebendazole, and this is done every January and July of each year, which is the National Deworming Month and has been the goal of the Department of Health since then. We also have mental health programs. These provide centers for adolescents suffering from emotional and mental problems like depression, abuse, and stress. It targets the overall psychological well-being of students. In relation to these services, the Department of Health and the Department of Education strengthened the program by launching the OK SADEP and program that improves the following the school-based feeding program, national drug education program, adolescent reproductive health education, and water sanitation and hygiene and school program. Again, what are the health services offered in school and community? Yeah, we have dental health program, the warming, medical program, mental health program, immunization, and nutritional program. These services offered in school and community are free and they are subsidized by the government to ensure that your health is being protected. Let's now proceed to our last topic, which is coping skills. Coping skills are tools and techniques that you can use to help handle difficult emotions, 
decrease stress, and establish or maintain a sense of internal order. Which means, health concerns or problems brought about that changes experienced during the adolescence should be dealt properly to prevent negative consequences. Good day, Grade 7 learners. This is Ma Marisa. Lisa Here Papo. are some coping From techniques. Dana, First, Hi. we have support Welcome seeking strategies. Class. This is to talk to a friend Before or someone, we start our seek advice from family members, and seek professional advice. Here are some positive problem solving strategies. First, do not act hastily. We must make an action plan when a problem comes up. We also need to look at the problem as a challenge. And we must come up with different solutions to the problem. We also need to do self-talk. It is the way to help you change your thoughts or it helps you reflect on the problem. Here are some self-talk statements that you can use as coping skills. These statements are useful when you are under stress or facing a challenge or problem. When you are preparing for a stressful situation, we must tell to ourselves that I have succeeded with this before. I know I can do it. I won't entertain negative thoughts. And when you are facing the challenge or problem, always say to yourself that I can do this. I won't rush. I will do slowly, step by step. And if I get nervous, I'll take a deep breath. And when you are coping with fear, bear in mind that you'll survive. You must relax. It will end and must take a deep breath. For self-congratulations or after solving a problem, congratulate yourself. Tell yourself that I did it and next time I don't have to worry much. Let's see if you have learned something on today's topic. Choose the letter of the correct answer, then comment it in the comment box. One, you got a failing score in a quiz. For you to prepare for a stressful situation, what statement would be best to use in this situation? And the correct answer is letter A. Number two. You have been tested positive for COVID-19 recently. For you to cope with fear, what statement could you use for this situation? The correct answer is letter B. Number three. As adolescents, you are experiencing sudden changes in your body. When you are facing a problem or challenge, what statement would you use for this situation? The correct answer is letter C. And that ends our lesson for today. For your assignment in your health module, kindly answer the activity 8 and 9. Seek for help from your parents or guardians in answering these activities. It will be checked on your follow-up session tomorrow. Before we end, I would like to leave you a message. Wear a mask. My mask protects you. Your mask protects me, and only together we can save lives.
thank you for spending your precious time with me. See you again in our next live streaming session. Again, I am your nurse, Marie Antoinette Ganalon Soriano from Disciplina Village, Big Nine National High School. Signing off. Goodbye and let us all be safe. Good day, Grade 7 learners. This is Ma'am Marisa D. Ocampo from Dalandanan National High School. Welcome to Health 7 class. Before we start our discussion, let us be reminded with some of the guidelines to follow during our live streaming class. Be on time. Avoid unnecessary words in the comment box. No hate speech. Stay focused and avoid interruptions. Take down notes while listening or watching. Have fun and enjoy learning. Are you excited to learn? Here is the most essential learning competency for today's lesson. Recognize the changes in different aspects of growth that normally happen during adolescence years. Let's find out what you have learned in our previous lesson. Identify what dimension of holistic health is being referred to each number. Type your answer in the comment section. Are you ready? Number one, it focuses on the body, how well it functions, and how well you care for it. Correct! The answer is physical health. Number two, it means peace and harmony with yourself, others, and a higher power. Good job! The answer is moral and spiritual health. Number three, it refers to how well you get along with other people, how other people react, and how you interact with social institutions. Excellent! The answer is social health. Number four, it involves understanding and liking yourself as well as accepting and learning from your mistakes. Very good! The answer is emotional health. Number five, it means being a lifelong learner by continuously wanting to learn new things and improve one's skill. Great! The answer is mental health. Upon learning the different dimensions of holistic health, let us first check your prior knowledge by answering our pre-assessment. Type your answer in the comments section. I will give you a minute to answer. Let's check your answers. 1. M 2. M S 3. E 4. B 5. S If you got all the right answers, good job grade 7. But if it is not, don't worry. Our lesson for today will surely help you. Look carefully at the pictures of boys and girls as they grow. What do you observe? Boys, 
height increases, body composition changes, weight changes, facial hair appears, muscles develop, shoulders broaden. Girls, height increases, body composition changes, weight changes, hips widen, breast develop. These are some examples of physical changes among boys and girls as they grow up. Why does it happen? And how will it happen? Let's find out in today's lesson about changes during puberty and health concerns, human growth and development. What is human development? Human development is a lifelong process of physical, mental, social, moral, spiritual, emotional growth, and change. In the early stages of life, from babyhood to childhood, childhood to adolescence, and adolescence to adulthood, great changes take place. Throughout the process, each person develops attitudes and values that guide choices, relationships, and understanding. A developmental psychologist, Eric H. Emerson, said in this theory on social development of human beings, describes eight stages through which a healthy developing human should pass from infancy to adulthood. Here are the stages of human growth and development. First stage, infancy, ages 0 to 1. Second stage, early childhood, ages 1 to 3. Third stage, preschool children, ages 4 to 5. Fourth stage, school age ages 6 to 10. Fifth stage, adolescence, ages 11 to 18. Sixth stage, young adult, ages 18 to 25. Seventh stage, adulthood, ages 26 to 50. Eighth stage, old stage, ages 50 onward. You may be experiencing significant changes in yourself because you are now in another stage of life. Adolescence. This occurs between puberty and adulthood. What is puberty? Puberty is the start of adolescence, which brings physical and emotional changes. This is the time when males and females are physically able to reproduce. It usually happens at the age of 10 or 11 for girls and 12 or 13 for boys. However, this is not true for everybody. Some adolescents experience puberty either ahead or later than others. During this period, secondary sex characteristics begin developing. Changes in the body vary and this means that we don't experience exact changes that another individual has experienced. You undergo significant changes in the health dimensions, physical, mental, social, emotional, and moral spiritual. Physical changes. Physical changes are some of the general changes that happen to adolescent boys and girls during puberty. There is a rapid increase in height and weight. Changes in circulatory and respiratory systems. Body compositions. Muscles develop rapidly although boys' muscles grow faster than girls. Other changes are, there is a sudden increase in hormone production. 
bones become harder, sweat and oil glands become more active. Primary sex characteristics are changes directly related to sexual reproduction. The reproductive organs of both boys and girls grow and develop. Boys experience their first release of seminal fluid or ejaculation from the penis. Girls experience first minark or the first release of blood and fluids from the vagina, later called menstruation. Secondary sex characteristics are changes not directly related to sexual reproduction. Boys, the voice becomes deeper. Adam's apple becomes bigger. The shoulders become wider than the hips. Hair grows on the face, body, and pubic area. The skin on the upper arms becomes rough. Girls, breasts develop. The hips become wider than the shoulders. Hair grows on the underarm and pubic area. Mental or intellectual change. Teenagers are showing different talents, skills, interests as a sign of mental health. Adolescents experience rapid mental development. They learn to question what others say. They make better decisions. They are already capable of thinking deeply. They also think less of themselves. Adolescent students can focus their attention on what they want to listen to. There is likewise an improvement in adolescent's memory and speed thinking. Emotional changes. Adolescents are more responsive to rewards and stress. Adolescents are more emotional and this makes them open to being hurt or in danger. Adolescent boys are also sexually active and become more aggressive. Adolescent girls become self-conscious because of the changes that are happening to them. Early maturing boys are usually taller and stronger. They have a good body image, so they are more confident secure, and independent. Social changes. They consider approval of friends and other adolescents or fear as very important. Adolescents enjoy being with friends so they stay longer with them after school. Young adolescents choose friends who share the same interests with them. Adolescents who grow up with family members showing love, guidance, and support for each other are less likely to get involved with bad company and engage in fights, vandalism, smoking, drinking, or drug sessions. Moral and spiritual changes. They understand themselves better and learn to accept and like themselves, including their weaknesses. They learn that house rules imposed by their parents are there to promote order and harmony at home. They begin to distinguish between rules that are negotiable and those that are non-negotiable. For your activity, answer activity 4. We are growing and developing. And activity 5, carried out stages of human growth on your learning packet. The changes that happen during puberty are normal to adolescents. You must know and understand these changes so that they will not surprise nor scare you. 
They are normal part of your growth and development as a person. What is important is for you to learn how to cope with them in appropriate ways. You will learn that your wonderful body has built-in mechanisms that help you grow and develop as an individual. You must recognize and use them well. Let's find out what you have learned in our lesson. Kindly type your answer in the comment section. I will give you a minute to answer. Answers 1P, 2M, 3E, 4S, 5MS. Well done, grade 7. Let me leave you a quotation coming from Daniel J. Siegel. The changes during adolescence are not something to just get through. they are qualities we actually need to hold on to in order to live a full, meaningful life in adulthood. Once again, I'm Mamarisa D. Ocampo saying thank you, stay safe, and God bless you all.